Greetings, people of the world. Matthew back with you here in Novora Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. It is year two, day 71, with EDSS here in the Realm Reborn. And last time, the game was pretty much turned on its head. When after we completed the last main story dungeon available in the game, we met up with Midgard Somir, a much discussed dragon by the people of Kerthas and Ishgard, who wanted us to investigate a dungeon known as the Keeper of the Lake to see what was going on. And there we did find Midgard Somir, who proceeded to rip strip us of Hylodon's strength and her gift, and in turn stripping us of the title of Warrior of Light and giving us something else. We are now also have been given a new little friend. But this is not the type of friend you want to have. Should be under... Alright, minion guide, yeah. So we should find this person's thing. Yep. There is Midgard Somir right there. So now that he is part of our being, we are no longer the Warrior of Light, but have been branded Dravanian, the villains of Kerthus and Ishgard. And so now, we're working for them. But we have to do everything we can to try and keep this on the down low, and hope that we cannot get them discovering that of no free will of our own, we have betrayed them. So, let's go ahead and speak with the Domen refugee here who is standing watch at the Keeper of the Lake to continue the challenge done yesterday. I was beginning to fear the worst. Were those explosions I saw? Ah, oh, but you shouldn't waste time talking with me. Alphano left a message stating that you were to return to the Rising Stones at once. Yeah. Maybe we should hide Midgard somewhere just so that we're not getting ourselves in a whole mess of trouble. Yeah, because you can pretty much be sure that if we have Midgard Somir out once we speak with Lucia again, it's gonna hit the fan. I mean, it's bad enough that we have been... Un been branded traitor by no fault of our own. But believe me, it's only going to go even more downhill from here. Being branded by Midgard Somir was just the little snowball that's going to trigger a huge avalanche. So, let's make our way back to the Rising Stones. Because, yeah, Alphanol wants to speak with us. Let's just hope that we can make it seem as positive as possible. Because it's going to be very difficult to do so given the circumstances we're currently in. Yeah, and there's Lucia, the representative from Ishgard, that Sir Emmerich is sent as his emissary. Ugh, Lucia, you don't want to be looking at me right now. Trust me, you don't. But my presence is not one you want to have. Because once you find out I've been branded traitor against my will, oh boy. Oh, that's no good can come from it. Alphanode, praise the twelve that you are hail and whole. Well... I wish that statement were actually true, but it's not. I came as soon as Minfilia informed me of Sir Amaric's request. You have completed your investigation of the Keeper of the Lake, I take it. Then I would hear your report. Are you sure about that? Because you don't want to hear this one. You conversed with Midgard Somir. I swear were anyone else to make such a claim, I would regard it with considerable skepticism. Well, it didn't go favorably for us. Are we to understand that the Worm Lord did not perish, and has soothed dormant these past fifteen years? I could show him it to you if you want, but I don't think you want me to. Less resurrection and more of a rejuvenation for he who dwelleth in eternity. Years passing as moments. Though his words were ambiguous at times, one statement left little room for interpretation. My people have heard the song, Ishgard shall burn. Clearly, an attack is imminent. We must share this information with Sir Amaric immediately. However, we dare not divulge your conversation with Midgard Somia in its entirety. Yeah, we better not. To even acknowledge that you heard the voice of a Dravanian is a grave but necessary risk. Lest we forget, men have been executed as heretics for declaring as much. Indeed. 
For your own protection, and for the sake of our tenuous relations with Ishgard, the truth cannot leave this room. I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more. As for how we shall present our revelation to Sir Emmerich's emissary, you may leave that to me. Pray remain here for now. But I get the feeling I'll be called into action soon, but far less of a man than I once was. Is there something you're not telling us, CD? You seem different somehow. Tis almost as if you are missing something. Something important. Oh, believe me, I am missing something very, very important. To a fallen infant, may God suddenly have stripped you of the blessing of light? Uh, are you alright? How do you feel? I see. It is relief to hear that you are otherwise unharmed. But... It beggars belief that anyone could possess the power to deprive you of her blessing. Midgard Somia made mention of a covenant, did he not? One of the ancient myths regarding Silvertil Falls states that when the waters came into existence, so too did the Great Worm. Alfic and Amea, Brother Time and Sister Fate, decreed that Midgard Somia ever watch over the source from which all water and magic was said to flow. I wonder, what if this was the covenant of which he spoke, and was not the gods with whom he treated, but Hydaelyn herself? Well, if he is watching over you as he claimed, mayhap you will have an opportunity to ask. Let us keep this matter to ourselves. I do not wish to burden our friends needlessly. Agreed. Very much agreed. Yeah, because we are trading on ice so thin we can very well fall right through it. Yeah, he's back. Art thou a pawn or master of thy fate? What hast thou wrought by thine own hands, mortal? Uh, destruction of the Guardian Empire? Something that you were not able to accomplish? Although you did deal them, deal them quite a blow. I will give you that much in terms of credit. But yeah, Midgard Somir is going to be haunting us for the rest of this game. And so now... My friend, I can scarce believe it. You confronted the Worm Lord and lived to tell the tale. Yeah, I did. Yeah, say no more. I give thanks to Helone for your preservation. It is our sole cause for gladness. Well, it's not her, Your unfortunately. Your encounter with the Keeper of the Lake served to confirm our fears. A great worm has roared, and it makes little difference if it was one of the two in Eorzea or any other. The Dravanians are coming. I am told that Ishgard has magical defenses against Dravanian attack, though I am not privy to their exact nature. Indeed. Will they be enough to repel a massive force? Ishgard has weathered countless assaults over centuries. This will be no different. <laughs> and now that you have confirmed the threat, none can ignore the Lord Commander's calls for the wards to be strengthened. I dare not presume to speak for him, but I expect the Lord Commander would sing your praises. <laughs> I must For now. Away, but we shall meet again soon. Yeah, and hopefully I won't be on the receiving end of your sword. Because, yeah, that is quite an impressive sword you're carrying. What's on your mind, Alphanode? Countless Alphanod? assaults weathered, and this will be no different? Why am I not convinced? <laughs> you're not alone, Alphanode, on that. Not even in the slightest. So let's speak with Alphano to com complete the challenge. The, Sh the Ishgardians have warred with the Dravanians for centuries, nay nearly 1,000 years. In all that time, not once have their enemies breached their defenses and entered the city proper. Yet regardless of how strong these magical wards may be, I nevertheless fear that the Ishgardians are underestimating the gravity of the situation. Though it was not Midgard Somir who roared, a call to arms by one of the first brood cannot be ignored. Until such time as they choose to request our aid, however, 
we can do naught but observe the situation at a distance and pray that our fears are unfounded. And so with that, the Rising Chorus Challenge is over, and we get 2,486 skill for completing it. But there's still much more to complete here in the main story of Patch 2.5. So let's speak with Alpha Node again to take on the next challenge entitled Aether on Demand. Alpha Node has a message from Umbreda for the Scions. And I forget, I believe Umbreda has requested a gathering of the Scions. I assume there has been some progress concerning our efforts to combat the Arsians. Pray inform her that our business with the Ishgardians is concluded for the moment. I shall be along once I've completed my communications with the Crystal Braves. So Umbreda is going to be over this direction. Speaking with Harry Boulder and Coltene, who actually met in patch t at the end of patch 2.3. They wanted to duel us, and we gave them a good fight. Umbreda? All done with your talk of the dragons? Wonderful, because Arsians are next on the menu. Let's head into the Solar, shall we? Yep, I'll meet you there. So yeah, hopefully we can make the best out of a bad situation. So let's go ahead and see what Moonbreda is going to talk to us about in regards to getting any headway on dealing with the Asians. And so, here come our old friends. Oriange, Eden Poplimo, Ishtola, and Thancred. Now that everything's calmed down a bit, relatively speaking I mean, I thought it might be a good time to share our progress on the weapon. Good idea. I believe we're on the verge of a breakthrough. That is good. Well, don't keep us all in suspense. No, of course not. So what do you have in mind there, Miss Mumbreda? Just in case anyone's forgotten, let's start by reviewing what we already know. So, an Arsian is an immortal because its soul doesn't return to the ethereal realm when its host is defeated. Instead, it flees to the place that lies between our world and the Void. Therefore, the first step to permanently defeating an Arsian is preventing its soul from making this journey. And if you recall, when we last gathered here, I had verified that White Aurasite has adequate capacity to entrap the beings, albeit only briefly. And so where does that put us? Which left the small matter of their extermination. Indeed. Aye. To unmake an Asian soul, one must need smite it with a concentrated burst, or blade, of purest ether. However, we wanted for both the data and the means to forge such a weapon. Short of experimenting on an actual Arsian, you see, there's no way to gauge how much ether its soul is made of. Yeah, that's true. As such, we don't know what etheric density our blade needs to have in order for it to work. So we'll just have to make the densest blade we can and hope for the best. Though, that would require a lot of ether. Yeah, it would. Hang on a minute! Why didn't we think of this before? White Aurasite can hold an absolute heap of ether, can't it? <laughs> yeah, it can. Please tell me you're joking! God's sakes, Ida! I feel as though I'm reliving the same scene over and over with you! How many times do you need to be told that White Aurasite cannot store ether for long periods? Being intangible matter, ether is given to dispersion! Only in its crystallized form is it a stable source of energy. I will test you later on this, so see to it you do not forget! Uh, right, yes. It's all coming back to me. So our hopes rest on good old crystals again, do they? While they are certainly reliable, they leave something to be desired in the area of portability. Indeed. I am reminded of the quantity of corrupted crystals required to thwart Leviathan, and the extraordinary lengths to which the Lamentsons went to transport them. What if it should prove that a similar quantity was needed to destroy an Asian soul? Or still more? That's a scary thought. I do not envy the poor Sardo as to lug all of that around, on the off chance that an Asian appears. That's the very problem we set out to solve. And I reckon we've found the answer. If it isn't practical to lug around the ether we need, we'll just have to draw upon another source. And the only viable source is the land. 
If you mean to tap the Great River of Ether, know that it will entail considerable risk. Meddling with the currents may well induce a surge like to the one which despoiled Mordona. Uh, that's not a very good thing to know. Give me a bit more credit, will you? Why would we need to tap the river when there are veritable reservoirs jutting out all over the land? Now we will need to go far. I speak of corrupted crystals. It might be that their aspect is out of balance, but a crystal's a crystal. It contains ether, and we can help ourselves to it. While corrupted crystals are indeed abundant, there is no guarantee that they will be in close proximity at a crucial moment. That is true. But what if we don't need them to be? What if we could tap their power from afar? A uh, malm away, say? If we could do that, we'd have ready access to ether aplenty in almost every corner of Eorzea. And so how exactly do you plan to accomplish this? I've yet to put my theories to the proof, but I've got a good feeling about this. If no one has any objections, I'd like to see where this avenue leads. If you think it worth your while, you have my blessing. But tell us, what are your theories? Yeah. I, for one, am most eager to understand the process, however vaguely. Hopefully it's not too complicated for us to understand. I thought you might say that. But no one wants to listen to boring old theories all day, do they? I know I don't. So with your permission, I'd like to try something a bit more hands-on. I've already built an etheric siphon especially for this purpose, and I've been meaning to try it out. Thing is, the profusion of corrupted crystals in Mordona makes it something of a high-risk testing ground. Of course. If anything goes awry with the siphon, it would be better if it didn't happen within spitting distance of quite so much ether. Of course. Ideally, I need an isolated specimen. Does anyone know where I can find one? Um... I don't know. May I suggest Northern Thanalan? There you will find corrupted crystals of middling size, standing a reasonable distance apart. Ideal for your needs, I should have thought. Oh, and if you do elect to visit the place, I should be much obliged if you would assist me in another matter while you are in the area. Has something happened? Yeah, more Movement bad news. Movement has been observed at Castrum Meridianum. During Operation attacking? Archon, the Alliance dealt the stronghold a heavy blow. Its facilities were extensively damaged, and its garrison reduced to a fraction of its former strength. Not but long now. after our forces withdrew, however, their ranks were replenished by reinforcements from Castrum Sentry. They now seek to rebuild, and to this end, they have their sights set upon the Ceruleum Processing Plant. Having lost the Empire's support, the 14th Legion lacks the resources to sustain itself. To them, this is a bid for survival, and they will doubtless fight like desperate men. Indeed. Though I have dispatched the Crystal Braves, I fear their strength alone may not suffice to stay the Imperial assault. I would request the Scion's aid in the defensive effort. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were trying to inveigle us into fighting your battle with the promise of shiny crystals. <laughs> Seems like an ulterior motive. Well then, consider me inveigled. I won't lie, the crystals you speak of sound perfect. So the Garleans have to go. Besides, we can't afford to beat about the bush. There's no telling when the Arsians will next appear. Indeed. Thine eagerness to hurl thyself into the jaws of danger cometh as little surprise. Exercise due caution, my prithee. Though you have become a crystal brave, you are yet a scion, Alfino. We could hardly refuse you. <laughs> of course. Pray, join the crystal braves and lend them your support. Thangrid and Papa Limo shall accompany you. Thank you, Lady Mephilia. Boys' night out. Ida and Yashtola, in the meantime, I would have you assist Moon Breeder. Scout out the crystal clusters, that the testing may commence as soon as the Galian threat has been eliminated. And the ladies get to do the work on the crystals. I like this if pop, it pleases this arrangement. You, I shall continue my own experiments on white orosite. Thank you, Arianger. Everyone, pray see to your preparations and depart as soon as you are able. Go well, and be safe. Well, we'll see what we can do. And so now that we have taken care of this conversation, 
It's time for us to speak with Alphanel, because he has not yet departed for Northern Fadlin. So let's see what he wants us to do. Well, we know where we're going, but what will we be doing when we get there? It would seem that events have once more conspired to rob us of rest and recuperation. Though I would wish it otherwise, I must ask that you head straight away to the processing plant. The fourth have already deployed to the area and await the arrival of the Scions. Wilred will brief you on the developing situation. Meanwhile, I must rendezvous with Captain Ilbed at our headquarters in Uldar. I shall take command of our forces there with a lighter heart, knowing that you go to support the front lines. And so, away he goes. It looks like we got more to deal with. Your duties take you to Northern Thetland, do they not? Hey there, Hoy Boulder. Yeah, I think you want to come along, don't you? We too must say our farewells to the Rising Stones for a time. Philemon travels to Ulda, and we shall serve as our escort. At my daughter's behest, I go to contact certain old acquaintances in the Gilded City. We are all beset on all sides by civil unrest and imperial machinations, threatened by primals and troubled by dragons. We need all the allies we can muster. Many of my friends hold positions of power, you see, and it is my hope that they can be convinced to aid the Scion's cause. If past events have taught us anything, then we know that Eorzea must present a united front or we shall fall. Ah, how extraordinary that my little Lucilia is involved in such far-reaching affairs. I am proud that I may not stand at her side, not only as a mother, but also as a colleague. A colleague with influential connections, but I feel that Uldar has become a place of danger even for someone so familiar with our streets. Ah, woe we'll betide the black guard that so much as glares in your direction, my lady. <laughs> Showing it off. You know, I'll give him a punch with a left and a right. Uh, yeah, I shall be protect well protected, it seems. Shall we be on our way, then? <laughs> well, good luck to the three of you. I wish you all the best. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a place in our heart because we helped reunite her with her daughter. And so, yeah, uh, it's starting to get a little lighter in here, but now, time for us to go to the Ceruleum Processing Plants. Yeah, it wasn't all that long ago that we had to go there again, because we had to deal with the Ivy, Elen Rawai, and prevent her from escaping into Guardian Hands. I don't know honestly why I threw my chocobo, I don't really need him for this. Now, where is Will Red? Alright, you're over there. Hey there, my good man. Commander Leveilleur sent word that you'd be coming. A veteran of your talents is most welcome. Not that I don't think we can handle this situation, mind you, but I've learned a trick or two since that disaster with the Emolja. But returning to the task at hand, the Flames Reconnaissance Scouts have reported Imperial soldiers assembling at Rabon's push. Such a force is likely interested in only one thing, getting their hands on the resources found here at the processing plant. The Gallians could begin marching on us at any time, and I think it's time we speak with Lieutenant Edelstein to finalize our counter strategy. Yeah, that's definitely a good idea. And thanks for not flipping me off. <laughs> Representative of the Immortal Flames, it seems. Yeah, I believe we met with Lieutenant Edelstein, I believe it was day 94. Lieutenant Tassess, my soldiers yet tell tales of your deeds during Operation Archon. Would that we could sit a while and reminisce about old times. Are the Gaulians on the move then? Not as such. The civilian draftsmen have, however, come across several highly suspicious crates within the boundaries of the processing plant. I had my sappers take a closer look. And our worst fears were confirmed. These boxes contained powerful explosive devices. Devices of Imperial design, no less. Found inside the plant, you say? But how? 
We've had guards stationed around the perimeter day and night. So how did this happen? Tis likely the plant was infiltrated long before the Braves arrived. Master Thunkred, have the sounds come in force then? All who could be spared, yes. Now there are likely more of these Imperial explosives to the palace, so I suggest we spread out and conduct a thorough sweep of the compound. Considering the volatile nature of Cerulean, allowing even one such device to escape our search may lead us to an uncomfortably close view of a rather spectacular explosion. Uh, right then, I shall pass word on to the fourth. Uh, what exactly should we do with these crates should we find them? Bring them here to me. It's carefully, mind you. My sappers will render their devices harmless, as they did with the first batch we found. Very well. Let's get started, shall we? And so, time for us to scramble, because we got a job to do. So now, yeah, everything we find is going to be within the confines of the area. So now we have to do a uh, thorough search in order to find them. So there's Mumbreda over there. We gotta see where all we could find these particular items of interest. Because they could be hiding anywhere. Alright, there's one of them. We have to find four. Now these things are cleverly hidden, actually. In fact, one is very cleverly hidden. We'll see why once we reach that point. In fact, I think we might have the opportunity to do it now, but I know Edie cannot climb ladders. Now, if you notice these um, rails here, these pipes, one of them is actually hidden on the pipes. Alright, here's another one. Now, so we'll deal with that one last. Let's just make sure we have not missed any nook or cranny. And then once we have obtained uh, crate number three, then we can go and proceed to finding crate number four. In fact, it might be a good idea for me to go off to crate number three now just to get a bird's eye view of where 4 is. So I think we'll do that. What I want to do is run up this ladder. And this one is very cleverly hidden. Because no one ever comes up here. And I mean no one. The only reason a person would come here would be to find one of the crates. So yeah, you gotta run all the way down to the far end. Now the I wasn't king when they said that this crate was cleverly hidden. Yeah, imagine having all that ceruleum raining down on your head. Not a comfortable feeling, I can tell you. By any stretch of the imagination. Alright, so let's see if we can get a bird's eye view on where the fourth and final crate could be. Because it could be anywhere and everywhere. Could be outside the gate, actually. In fact, I think I think that's exactly where it could be, because yeah, we don't see a crate staining on that structure there. In fact, maybe it, maybe it is. Let me drop down here. Ow. Because yeah, you never know, right? I, th I think he. Ha I think that one guy has the right of it. I think it may be up there where Ishtola is standing. All I have to do is figure out how to get up there myself. And it looks like I found it. Alright. So it's not up here. Yeah, let let's see how long it takes me to find crate number four. I think running up or rather, down from the stairs, was an erroneous mistake. Unless we go down here to get a better perspective, because, yeah, these things could be anywhere. Okay, yep, yeah, there it is. There's number four. Yeah, here it is. So let's go ahead and take it. 
And we now have them all. Alright. Back over to Lieutenant Edelstein to complete the challenge. Here's our big man right over here, so let's let him know we've got them all. Should you discover any containers that appear out of place, then hand them over to me. My sappers will determine whether these objects are explosives, and then disarm them should they prove to be so. Well, here are the crates you were looking for. There are four more of those blasters, said things. I'll have our engineers disassemble them at once. Fine work as always, Lieutenant SS. The entire compound has now been scoured from top to bottom, so I should hope that that's, that's the last you've seen of these explosives. Our troubles with Castle Meridianum, however, are far from over. Scouts have returned with news of movement on the front. Well, that certainly sounds like news to me, but news we'll save for next time, because, yeah, we need to get ourselves mentally ready for the challenge that is about to follow when we go pay the Guardians another visit. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV on Realm Reborn. And when I join you again, we will make our way over to Castle Meridianum, I guess, to once again take out some creepy and pissed off Guardian soldiers. So until next time everyone, this is Matthew at Novora Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.